What are the top do's and don'ts for self-publishing success on Amazon KDP? Well, stick around and I will tell you, my mates. All killer, no filler. At number five for the don'ts we have, don't make a book you wouldn't buy as a gift. I mean, if you wouldn't buy your own book and give it to a loved one as a gift, then why would anybody else buy it? Basically, what I'm saying is making a low quality book isn't going to make you a millionaire. Every book that you make, you must be proud of it because of the absolute quality. If you do that, you will make sales, mate. And in at number five for the do's. Niche down, but not out. You should select a niche that has low competition, sure. But it must be a popular niche to start with. If you niche down too far, there will be no one searching for your type of book. Let me just give you a little example. Animal colouring books are a popular niche. So animal colouring books for kids, animal colouring books for children, animal colouring books for kids ages six to seven, things like that. That's an example of good niching down. However, jungle animals for boys ages six is probably a little bit too niche down. It's too specific and probably rarely searched. Now, people may stumble into them and think, oh, that looks good and we'll buy it. But the point is people are not looking for it in the first place and that's the difference. But in at number four for the don'ts. Don't keyword stuff. If you don't know what that means, it's when you stuff loads of keywords in your title and subtitle of your KDP books. Doing this not only dilutes the power of the keywords that you're trying to get in there, but it also does Amazon's heads right in. Many people are now getting banned for this sort of thing. As a rule of thumb, one great keyword in the title and one great keyword in the subtitle is a good choice. And if you want to keyword stuff, you can stuff them in your seven backend keywords. And in at number four for the do's, do publish regularly. The more products you have, the more chances you have to sell. That doesn't mean go and make a shed load of low quality books because that isn't going to help. The point is the more quality products you have, the more chances you have to sell, which means ultimately you will make more money per month. Okay, so in at number three for the don'ts, don't spend your time copy and pasting links to your books on socials and then assume that's enough to make your book successful. Let me ask you this. How often do you scroll your social media and see a book there and think, well, there's a book, click on that book and then go on to buy it? Not very often. It's the equivalent of old telesales cold calling. Hello, would you like to buy a kitchen? No, I would not. Don't call this number again. Ah, OK. For non-fiction niches, focus on giving away free value on socials. For fiction niches, focus on what's inside the book and not the product as a whole. So things like characters, environments, story arcs and things like that. Get people interested first before we start to sell to them. Now at this point if you are enjoying this video please leave it a like and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please do so. Cheers! So in at number three for the do's, do prioritise your book cover. Your book cover is your shop window. Nobody's going to click on a pants book cover. All book sales start with the cover. If your cover isn't good, you're not going to get a sale. There's no potential of getting a sale if your cover isn't good. I've created an acronym for book covers, the READ acronym. So R is relevancy to the actual niche. And I'm talking about things like colours, themes on the cover, fonts and things like that. E is easy to read as a thumbnail. Remember, a lot of people are going to be buying books on their mobile devices. So we want to make sure that the book cover can be seen easily as a thumbnail. A. Attractive. Your book cover must speak to your core audience. So when you're designing your book cover, don't think about what you like. Think about what your potential audience might like. And D. Depth. Never make a flat book cover. When you go on Amazon and you have a look at book covers, you will notice that a lot of the covers have got depth. I'm talking things like gradients, shadows, textures and things like that. It's very rare to see a completely flat um, book. Uh, obviously, there is some exceptions, but in general, there's lots of depth there, which makes them look more professional. And in at number two for the don'ts. Don't have a basic Amazon page. And what I mean about this is what is the point in putting loads of effort into your Amazon KDP book only to then not use the promo sections on the Amazon page itself to advertise it when you have published it? And the three main areas I'm talking about here are having a great book description, 
which has a hook and a motive reason to buy the book and a great call to action. Having great A plus content, which adds images to your book page. And that's for things like branding, extending the promises that you've made in the book description and also promoting your other books. And lastly, the editorial reviews section, which is a section where you can hand pick your best reviews and you can put them in a distinct section so you can tell people what you want them to see from the reviews that you have received. And in at number two for the do's. Do use lead magnets for building an audience. Give people something free in exchange for joining your email list. This could be a short book, it could be a checklist, it could be a course, for example. And in those lead magnets, you could have links to your paid books. Now, that could get you some sales, but the main reason for the lead magnets is to get people onto your mailing list so you can build your audience. And then later on, you can market to them your new books and things like that. And in at number one, the biggest don't there is, don't expect instant results. Now, some people hit a home run straight away, but most don't. Practice makes perfect. And as I have already mentioned, the more products that you have, the more ways you have to earn. KDP isn't an overnight moneymaker. More of a fantastic business that you can nurture over time to create a great income. Which leaves me with the number one do to do on Amazon KDP. Do make a brand that focuses on one niche. That way you don't have lots of different books in lots of different niches that you can't market effectively with the time you have. Being really good at one niche is far more profitable than being really bad at lots. If you're in one niche, you can focus on being a force within that niche. So that was my top five do's and don'ts for Amazon KDP success. If you like this video, please leave it a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And if you like, I have hundreds of other videos on this channel which will help you in the pursuit of becoming a KDP ninja. So go and check them out. And until next time. Bye.